Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Nitro Slash, part of their Quiver series. This board features Nitro's true camber, which is just good old-fashioned camber. So from contact point to contact point, you have that arc of traditional camber. That's going to give you the load, snap, pop, and drive, because you're going to be able to just push right into this board. This board is available in 151 wide, 156 wide, and 162 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that was overcast. There was about six inches of fresh snow. There was another storm rolling in, so there was low to moderate winds. You had fresh pow, chunder, chop, rocks, kind of just everything with an early season storm like this, and I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my Rome Black Label bindings. This board is on the softer side of directional freeride, making it more towards that middle of the road freeride flex. It is fully directional in its nature, meaning softer nose progressively stiffening back up through to the tail. With a little bit of torsional flex to it, it's not like a crazy amount in there, but with the width, you really do notice that there's a little bit of rigidity in there. Now, when it comes to stability, it's stable from inside the front insert pack back through the tail. That is the stiffest section of the board. What that actually means is when you're riding, you don't really have to worry about it getting bucked around when you're just locked in and you're flat basing. It's only if you go Mach 10 into uneven terrain that the nose gets a little chatter and it resonates back under the front foot. Otherwise, this board will plow through everything in its path if you're calculated with it, and you don't really have to worry about getting knocked around. With this board being traditional camber, you have to load it up to get it to engage and you have to load it up aggressively. This board takes a little bit of muscle just to get it to snap. Now, what you're going to really notice is that when you load that camber up and you roll it back on the tail to get it to pop, it's not the snappiest board. It just isn't. You're gonna wanna use a little more speed and a little more power than you think to get it to clear anything in your path. When you do, it's good. When you don't, it's not so good. All right, so when it comes to buttering with this board, you got a ton of setback, you got camber, you got the flex pattern, you got this added width. It's a chore to butter. I mean, I'm even talking pow butters. Just to get out on that nose, you've got so much space to work with, but to find the sweet spot, you're really spinning around trying to lock in it with the tail. It's a little bit shorter and stubbier. You're doing more high speed wheelies with it. If you know how to manhandle a camber board, especially in powder, you're probably not gonna have a problem with it. If you're riding lighter snow and you're not on something steeper that you can really push into, it does take a little bit more effort. So here's the thing with this board. It really rides like two decks on edge. When you're riding mellower terrain, going slower, it's sluggish edge to edge. It's just not that quick and nimble. You really feel like you're leveraging your weight into the edge of the board and really pushing it over and spending a lot of energy just to get it on edge. Now, when you open it up and let this thing rip, it comes alive. This board can rail turns when you're being really aggressive and going fast, which is awesome. The big thing to note is that all the power really does come from under the back foot out towards the tail. So when you kick your knee into the center, you're gonna be pushing through that tail, through the end of the camber zone, and that's gonna give you the drive to just really let this thing rip. The best way to describe it is it's suited for mellow carves when you're going slow, but when you rip, you can lay a trench with this thing, really get it over on edge, push through everything in its path, and not worry about it. It's for someone that understands how to put the pedal to the floor. Who's this board for? The pow chasing free ride guy. Man, this thing's wide. That's one of the first things I notice. Normally when I get on a board that's wider, because I have a size 10 foot, I don't really notice these things, but this time, I really did. This is a board that you really want to put the pedal to the floor, push through everything in front of you. It's a good chunder buster. It's stable. It's got camber. So if you're one of those guys that complains that there's no camber powder boards, you really should be looking at this because it's solid for it. Overall, it was fun for just the type of terrain that I was riding, what was open, what the snow felt like. It pushed through everything with ease. Yeah, you get a little chatter and you kind of feel it on the outside of your front foot, but overall, this board just wants to just go as fast as possible on a pow day. Comparable boards, the Amplid Surfari, the Ride Super Pig, the Rome Stalefish. Binding recommendations, the Nitro Team Pro, the Ride C9, the Union Atlas. 
Atlas. This has been my review of the Nitro Slash. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Dave Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.